Good morning. It's officially time to get started. So we're gonna get started with pulling the engine out of this. I think we're gonna drop it out of the bottom. I'm gonna put it up and show you guys. So like I said, the easiest way is gonna be drop it out the bottom. We have a uh, subframe up here that the engine bolts to. There's one bolt there, one there, one back here, and one right there. And then the transmission cross member is a couple bolts. It'll drop right out and everything will come down. So we'll end up setting it on a couple blocks of wood. We will disconnect the strut at the top and separate the upper ball joint, pull the calipers off, and that will allow everything to come down. Uh, the steering is going to come with it as well. So we'll just separate the steering U, U joint at the rack. I think that's going to be the easiest way to get everything out. And then we can lift the Jeep back up and pull it out with an engine crane. So yeah, nothing to do but to start taking stuff apart. The engine is free. So now I need to get a engine crane rigged up to it. And then I can remove the transmission because I picked up a Jeep JK transmission transfer case. And if the internet is correct, I should be able to remove the bell housing from the diesel nag one and put it on the JK nag one and then bolt everything together and that's that. So hopefully, fingers crossed, the internet is right. And then once I get the engine transmission put together, we can go ahead and set it in here, lower the body down and see how it's gonna fit. Well, it's time for me to stop talking. I need to get that transmission off of that engine over there and then swap bell housings and see if it's all gonna bolt together. I'll uh, bring you guys back in in the bell housing swap process so that uh, you can see what's going on. All right, we're getting our first look. inside the bell housing. No cracks, that's perfect. Anytime you have something like this split apart, always check for cracks in the flywheel or the welds. And uh, so far this looks good. All right, time to pull the torque converter out and swap the bell housings. See if I can do this without making a big mess. No, not too bad. Set that aside. So on first glance, these look the same. I'm going to uh, measure from the face of the pump 
to the end of the shaft and make sure those are the same before I go and take anything apart. We have exactly four and a half inches and four and a half inches. Now I'm going to measure to the first step. Two and three quarters. Two and three quarter. And finally I'll measure to the last step. Got an inch and a half. An inch and a half. So, so far the internet looks like it's right. These transmissions are the same here. They just get different bell housings. All right, we have our bell housing swap for now. We're gonna revisit this later. I'm gonna look into a rebuild kit. Might as well rebuild it while we're here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this mated to that. And then we can lift that up and set it in there. Tech tip, soft shackles make great lifting points on engines that are awkward to lift. You can wrap them around the exhaust manifolds and you don't have to worry about it hurting or breaking anything. So now we're gonna go ahead and lift this up. I got the engine mounts undone. They're a nice simple through bolt. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this lifted out and rolled over there. straight edge from this body mount straight across to this body mount and measure the height that we have for the transmission tunnel then I'll check that height versus the height we have and then I'll start giving us an idea how high or low this engine is going to have to sit in the chassis before we even drop the body on it. Alright so I've got my straight edge Hold that across and measure down. We have 10 inches. Just gonna hold the straight edge across the transmission. There's an old body mount for reference. Basically top of the frame. We have 11 inches. So the front of the engine is gonna have to go down. Which means I'm going to have to cut those motor mounts off. So I have the engine sitting where I think it needs to be. I just have a steel plate across the bottom with the oil pan sitting on it. And then a jack stand under the transfer case. So far, looks like we got tons of room. I'm going to go ahead and lower the body down, make sure we have enough firewall clearance.
Okay, so I need to remove the battery tray and I might have to shift the engine over just a bit. There is room for it to come towards the driver's side. There's tons of room. We'll shift that over. I should go grab the steering box and bolt it back in so I can make sure the steering shaft is going to clear. It looks like we have tons of firewall clearance. Maybe even a little bit too much. So far, so good. Everything is clearing this time. That's good. This is looking really good, guys. All right, let's keep going now. I'm very pleased so far. The engine does need to sit down about another inch. Same with the, the back of the transmission. But we have full body down. And I think a small body lift is going to do us a big favor. That's about what I got in there right now is the equivalent of a 1.25 body lift. So run that and move the engine itself down one inch. That's going to give me all the clearance I need underneath. And I mean, it looks like it was made to fit. Like even how this coolant hose comes up around. You got tons of room at the back. Turbo clears, there's lots of room. This doesn't need to be there anymore. Miles of room for the radiator and stuff to go up front. Intercooler, all that stuff. Show you guys underneath. Oil pan to diff clearance. Like, you can't ask for anything better than that. There's still tons of room for suspension travel and we're putting a lift kit in it. So we're gonna gain even more room. Like I said, the engine transmission could stand to come down. Right now there's two two by fours stacked on top of each other holding the transmission up on the factory cross member, no, no less. We're just test fitting the uh, radiator, intercooler, and AC condenser. I just went and grabbed the steering box so I can bolt that in and make sure it's not gonna hit the rad where I have it, uh, where I think I want it. And there's plenty of room to put an electric fan in there. That's probably going to do it for video updates today. We'll see you guys in the next video.